What up, people of Waganda? What's up, y'all? Locks Low Firearm Reviews here today. Alright, today I got a long awaited review. It's been honestly close to a year uh, since Primary Arms, thank you, Dimitri, uh, sent out this scope to me. Um, and so, what we're talking about today is the Primary Arms 3 to 18 ACSS HUD DMR scope. Alright? So this is part of the PA, PA's Primary Arms SLX lineup, right? So the SLX lineup is known for its balance of reliability, innovation, and affordability. Um, you know, 3 to 18, so you got 3X on your lowest setting and 18X on the highest setting. So you can still do close-up shots and step out to 1,000 yards plus if you need to. Um, it's a first focal plane. Uh, which I'll explain later on in the video the difference between a first focal plane and a second focal plane. Um, so what we're gonna do? Um, quick little B-roll, you know, quick little cool shots, and then we're gonna come in, give you guys the specifications of the scope, and then after that, I'm gonna give um, some details, the things I like about the scope, and then like the pros and cons, and we'll wrap it up. So stay tuned. Hopefully, it'll be a good video, and you guys like it. Recording. Good. Yep. Going. All right, lock, rolling. Rolling. All right. Twelve five at two fifty. All right. All right. Welcome back, guys. So. Quick specifications on the Primary Arms 3 to 18 HUD DMR scope. All right, so got my list right here in front of me. Fix it up for it real quick. All right, so first, the battery. Since this is an illuminate, illuminated reticle, um, there is a battery in here, and it's a CR2032 um, lithium battery. Um, of course, the company is Primary Arms. Now for your turrets, your click elevations, uh, your click values, my bad, your click values is 0.1 mils. So this is in mils. Um, it's first focal plane, illuminated reticle, 13.2 inches long, has a three to 18 uh, magnification range. Unfortunately guys, this is not night vision compatible, um, but you can probably use other night vision devices with it. Um, it has a it's a 30 millimeter tube with a 50 millimeter objective lens And so what that 50 millimeter objective lens allows you to do is when you're shooting Let's say dawn or dusk the lighting conditions are low um, This wider uh, lens allows you to gather more light and so you can be able to uh, accurately engage targets in those low light settings um, The reticle is the ACSS HUD DMR reticle Again, I'll explain more on um, what that is. Um, total elevation and total windage uh, on the website, it has 14.5 mils. Um, so I'm sure you know you get a riser, you probably add a little bit more mils to it. But based off how the scope is, it's 14.5 mils um, for adjustment on your elevation and your windage. <clears throat> um, it weighs 25.4 ounces, it's fog water and um, shock resistant has a lifetime warranty which is always good um, just in case anything ever happens and so this scope right here is the 556 um, version so it's calibrated for those NATO rounds M193 uh, M855 um, mark 262 um, if you don't know what those are M193 is 55 grain M855 is the 62 grain green tip and the Mark 262 is the 77 grain, no Black Hills, OTM, that type of stuff. Um, and you got a power ring back here. And 
if you look at the ring where you adjust your magnification setting is it has this little fin and holes in here and so you're able to take this fin out and replace it and put it in a position that allows you to turn the, the power ring to your liking and also lastly it has zero um, locking turrets or resettable turrets uh, whichever one you want to call them um, again I'll explain later in the video what those do but this is actually very beneficial um, for this type of role like how I have my DMR and I might engage targets at different distances might have the dial might have the holdover having those zero um, locking turrets actually comes in help all right so that is the specifications on the scope so we're gonna take a quick step out to the range come back and I'm gonna start breaking down some of my favorite parts of this scope and why it's one of my favorite scopes I own all right one thing I didn't mention in the video I want to put in <clears throat> Uh, this is called your parallax right here. So basically, let's say your parallax is set for a target at 100 yards. That means the target at 100 yards is going to be clear and crisp inside your scope. <clears throat> but with your 100 yard parallax setting, if you look at a target 200, 300, 500 or more yards away, your target will not be clear. It is going to be blurry and very hard to see or impossible to see. And so what you would do is that if your target is out, say, 300 yards, you would go over like in between the five and the two or just go to 500, which is what I usually do. And your target is going to be more clear. And so if you're out past 500 yards, you know, you go through the affinity setting and then your target will be clear in your scope. So that is what the parallax setting is. Sorry. So right. I would minus whatever the wind speed is by about two miles an hour. All right. Um, I'm gonna fire one round see if I get I'm on target. Right. I'll give you a rough estimate here in a minute. Maybe, uh, wind speed. Yeah. You want a tripod? I'm gonna shoot one at 255. I've got my hat in the way to catch grass. That's fine. Do I hit it? Yep. Yeah, you're on it. Which one are you shooting at? Yeah, one uh, 250. That's 250? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's center mass. No, you're... It's like center, is Mine's it? center mass, you're about... Or is it at one right, right above it? Two low. Cool. So you're, but you're good. Yeah, that's center. Turn around. Let's roll out. Come on, Thomas. Let's roll I out. I got you. I covered you. All right. Let's go. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. We out. All right. Welcome back, y'all. Okay, so starting it off. So the primary fame, I, I, I guess primary fame, I guess in my, my eyes, one of the things that makes primary arms stand out versus all the other you no know, scope making companies is the reticle the ACSS reticle All right so the advanced combined sighting system is a revolutionary reticle made with holdovers wind estimations range estimations um, whether your target is moving like walking or running um, how to size your target um, a whole bunch of things right I'm gonna do a separate video on just ACS reticle but if you're don't want to wait for that there's other people like Coda boy 32 he did a really good video on the ACSS reticle um, and how he breaks it down uh, so you can watch that out and watch that video and I'll explain um, just as good but um yes this reticle allows you to do all those things just through the through the reticle um, you don't really have to do too much thinking right if the line matches up then let's say at 400 then you know the target is about 400 yards away or if you have a circle and uh, I believe it's like the head if the head fits in that circle at that distance and that's basically your estimation of that range um, it has dots on the side you know for like wind at like five miles an hour you know at 300 yards or something right it has it has a lot of things in there like I said I'm gonna do a separate video um, that really helps the shooter and it's honestly no BS my favorite reticle out there um, you can just do all your work through the reticle. You don't really have to do too much thinking. And that's why I like it. 
um so that's probably in my eyes like the greatest like one of their their main selling points is the reticle right you, you can just do so much with it and it's really a bomb ass reticle um the second thing um the focal plane first focal plane all right so first focal plane versus second focal plane the first focal plane the reticle size will change depending on your magnification setting so if you're on a lower magnification your reticle will be smaller now as you increase that magnification your reticle size will start to increase right um so first focal plane one of the the benefits of first focal plane is that you, know, you have your wind holds you got your range estimations and all those stuff right um so whatever magnification you're setting you're on it will still be true so you know even though it's just 3 to 18 if i dial to 5 power and i use my wind holds or my uh holdovers um they would still be true right um but the downside of first focal plane is that reticle especially on this on the like 3x or let's say if you have one to six on one x it's very kind of it's very small it's kind of hard to see so if you have like eye problems it might not be your preferred reticle to use um but that's really the one downside to it is that the reticle is small so if you try to bring your gun up real quick you might have a harder time depending on the light settings finding that reticle um but you know i prefer first focal, first focal plane but you know it's up to you um so second focal plane second focal plane is that the reticle size doesn't um change on magnification settings so you know 1x 6x 8x it'll be the same now the downside to a second focal plane is that your holds are the truest on the lowest setting so in this case 1x right or let's say if you had one to six it'd be true on one x or six x right you go out to three power your holds may not be true right and so that's the downside of second focal plane um but the reticle is bigger right on those like that one x so uh, it's kind of preferred by a lot of hunters to use second focal plane because you know they just happen to walk up on a deer you know they just want to bring it up sight right there bam take the shot and I lost a lot of hunters. No, your average hunter is not shooting that far. You know, they they the whole goal is to make a humane kill on the animal, right? Not see who can get the furthest shot, right? So a lot of times the hunters they'll shoot something, you know, hunt it, two hundred, you no, know, within three hundred yards, right? So they don't need, you no, know, like they don't need that much in their scopes. Right? That's why like a basic hunter scope will just be a crosshair, right? they just want the the image to be bigger so they have something to aim at right now if you look at like what we do short bus where you are taking shots 500 yards away and the wind is blowing now you definitely are going to want your holes to be true on whatever setting you're on and so that's why if you're looking for like this dmr spr like a long range in gun then definitely you're going to want a first focal plane now if you're just looking to be in the tree stand and take a shot at a deer 50 yards away 100 yards away at a you no know, whatever um then it doesn't really matter um second focal plane will be just fine for you but that's the difference between first and second focal plane so if you no know, wind estimations range estimations and all that shit isn't important to you um second focal plane be fine but if all those things are important to you go first focal plane all right now on to the other part I like the turrets. So, like I said, the turrets are adjustable, um, or how the people call it, zero lock, zero locking turrets. So basically, what that means, let's say, put the scope on a gun, we're going to range to zero. So we go to zero. My dial will be, you know, like, let's say my dial is like this, right? Whatever, wherever it is, wherever the fuck it is. Right, I'm just gonna fuck it up for you. All right, wherever the fuck it is. Now I find my zero. Now, what if I want to go somewhere else and shoot? Now I have to, you know, adjust my dial. So the zero I just had before is now gone, right? So I don't want to have to zero every time I go to a different range or shoot at a different distance. Um, so what the zero locking turns does, that first time you go to the range, we'll go, let's say, 100 yards. Zero your gun at 100 yards. You take the turrets, you unscrew them. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but you can unscrew it, lift the actual whole complete turret off, 
and move it down to the zero. So when you put it down to zero, right? And once all your turns is zeroed, your 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 the zero that you had is now that zero, right? It's not it doesn't change. So when you go let's say you go somewhere else and now you're shooting 300 yards, you know you got to dial and turn and all that shit. Well, at the end of the day, instead of having to re-zero your rifle, you just go back to the zeros on your turrets. Because that brings you back to that 100 yard zero you had at that the first time, right? And so that's where the zero turrets come into play. And so that's why I like them. And so you just go all the way, like, you just screw all the way back down until you find your setting, or you just go back and forth. And you can just do that until you find your setting. So um, that's why I like them. And. A lot of the high-end scopes, a lot of the professional scopes do have this setting, um, or turrets that do do this. Um, so, just something to keep in mind. Um, if you're really looking for, I guess, I don't want to say professional, but if you're really looking for something that's, I don't know, gonna, <laughs> I'm trying. I guess I gotta find a better word for it. But you, you guys get what I'm saying. No, if you want something that's just gonna be bomb-proof and just work under all kinds of adverse conditions. I would definitely get one with a zero locking turrets like this. <clears throat> All right. How does that make you feel? I love. I, I love it. Steel 308, it's just always fun. So, that's pretty much the overview of the scope. You know, you got your diopter back here. So, you know, different people have different eye settings or settings to eyes. So, you can adjust that to find a clear image that works for you. Um, you have your illumination setting on the left hand side. Um, and they do have in between. So, <clears throat> you don't have to go all the way back down to zero on your illumination. You can go in between five and six and turn your illumination off. And then when you need it, you just click right there to the five or a six and your illumination is on that setting. Um, no, you got your adjustable power fin for your power ring. Um, got your, uh, you know, your windage elevation, like I said, 14.5 mils. The mount I'm using is, uh, I think Monstrum, just like a Monstrum um, scope mount I got off Amazon, cheap. <coughs> um, and it works fine. And this is honestly one of my favorite scopes, um, just because I can. What it allows me to do, you know, again, the scope, the reticle itself is probably like the biggest selling point to me, because I like this chevron. It's a better uh, point of aim than just like a crosshair. Um, I like the wind holes; they're actually they're true. You know, I've used them in all kind of conditions. Um, estimate the range holdovers work. Um, in my last video, we went out to 500 yards plus. I'm using holdovers and it works. Um, I've used this on a number of different platforms, even platforms that were not 5.56. Five, um, I put this on my Aero 308 I had before, and I put this on my SOCOM 16, and they worked fine, um, even though they were 7.62. Um, so, yeah, um, scope works, y'all. Uh, I don't like to keep reiterating this, it works, it works, it works. It's a good product. Um, for uh, especially under what's under seven hundred dollars I honestly cannot find a scope at that price point that will really beat out this scope now I know people will be like oh well this scope with Atheon or something um, that's a good scope too uh, don't get me wrong you know people have those and they like them but for me this is one of my favorite scopes and I'm not looking to part with this scope um, what I may do is take this off this rifle because I want to build a 308 and put this on a 308 and get me like a I know primary arms was looking at making a 1 to 10 so I might want to put that 1 to 10 on here hopefully Dimitri still likes me <laughs> alright but definitely guys if you're in the market looking hey what's a good budget scope that I can put on a DMR or SPR or you know, some type of long range precision gun Definitely don't shy away from the 3 to 18 HUD DMR for the price point and the capabilities. It's, it's really hard to beat. You know, I know people will say, oh, this scope out here is $1,500. Like, 
Yeah, but this scope right here does the same thing that $1,500 scope does, so that's just how I feel about the issue. Um, this is a good scope, y'all. I highly recommend it. Can't say it enough. Um, but besides that, um, that's all I got, guys. Uh, good scope. Works well. Um, even on 3X, you can still use it. Um, it might not be the best for CQB, but you can still use it for, like, surprisingly close in shooting. You know, you can still use it for CQB. It might not be the best, but you can still use it. Um, I've gone out 500 yards plus. Clear image, clear glass. Um, the optic itself isn't very heavy. Um, yeah, guys, I honestly don't know what to say bad about this scope no primary arms dimitri y'all really did a great ass job with this 3 to 18 scope and you know for the shooters and the tax tax bracket i'm in this is exactly what we we need and we're looking for so who y'all um i know undead prophet he has the same scope as me so you know he'll pretty much you know agree with what i'm saying it's a great scope great price point does everything we need it to do um so no complaints about that so you know if you guys are interested hit up primary arms website um, check it out see if the 3 to 18 scope works for you um, they have other line of scopes like two and a half to tens one to sixes one to eight um, they're building one to tens they got four to fourteen you know a whole list a whole list of stuff um, and so yeah primary arms is definitely one of my go-to companies for optics um, and so can't recommend them enough guys but I do want to thank you guys, you know, for sitting here for like the 20 or so minutes, listening to me ramble and talk. Um, hopefully, you know, you learned something. Hopefully, I educated you. Um, if not, hopefully, just me talking was enjoyable for you. So, thank you for watching, y'all. Stay dangerous. Um, follow the new Instagram page, um, at Locks and Load, uh, since, you know, IG took down the last one. Um, and join that page. Also, join Wagunda CDF. Um, so locks and loads is like just kind of me and my YouTube stuff and the Wagunda CDF is the training page So I put nothing but training and educational stuff on Wagunda stuff uh, page So like comment subscribe. Thank you for watching. Stay dangerous locks and load out